Jesus said to us, you are the light of the world. There are many places in the world where at the edge of the land, there are rocks and dangerous places out in the sea near the land. And so people over the centuries have built lighthouses to guide the ships, the sailors, for their own safety. And so they, these lighthouses have saved many lives, many ships. And so Jesus said, you are the light of the world. We're a light in the darkness. To protect people, to save them from the danger. What dangers? Lots of dangers. A person who lives in sin has all kinds of curses and problems he brings on himself. But the huge danger is a lake of fire for those who do not turn from their sinful way. Turn to Jesus for mercy. So Jesus said, you are the light of the world. In the Great Commission, the Great Commission is given five times, actually more than five times, but especially five times. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 28, he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost and teach them to do all the things I've commanded you to do. Did you hear? We're to make disciples. Not just get people to raise their hands and say they want to ask Jesus into their heart. He said, make disciples. Now, a disciple is someone who has forsaken all to follow Jesus. Did you hear? A disciple is someone who has forsaken all to follow Jesus. Whatever Jesus says, we've made up our minds to do it. And then he says, baptize them. That is a public statement showing that you, now you're going to follow Jesus. By the way, baptism is not optional. It's not like spinach, the restaurant. You take it if you like it. If you don't like it, you don't bother with it. It's a command. The Lord has told us to do it. It's for disciples, those who have forsaken all to follow Jesus. It's not just something about church membership. It's not something about dedicating your child. It's for disciples. It's fine to dedicate your children. It's fine to join the church, but that's not... Baptism is for those who have forsaken all to follow Jesus. And so Jesus said, go and make disciples, baptize them, and then teach them to do all the things I've told you to do. All the things? That's what he says. Now, what's the first command Jesus gave? Well, in Matthew, he started his ministry with one very important command. Repent. John the Baptist had preached on that same thing. The Apostle Paul preached the same thing. Jesus commanded us to preach it in the Great Commission, he said in Luke 24, 47, and that repentance and remission of sins be preached in his name among all nations. So at the day of Pentecost, when the great crowds of people were saying, they're so convicted by Peter's preaching, they said, what should we do? He said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. The first step is repentance. Turn from our careless, disobedient, selfish way. Submit to his authority, his lordship. We believe him, we trust him to save us. He's Lord though, we're gonna follow him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. 
And that's how you can tell if you're saved, if you're obeying. The Bible says, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. And so, when we have repented, we become a light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world and people and communities and families, individuals can see from our life and from our words what it means to follow Jesus. You see, the Bible says, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Sinners have all kinds of problems in their lives and they don't even realize many of them are caused by their own sins. They know not at what they stumble. Like someone walking through a, 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 a room at night and the furniture has been rearranged and it's dark and they bump into this and they knock their shins on that and they b bump into something else. That's the way a lot of people live. Their sins are bringing pain and trouble to themselves and those around them, and they don't even realize what's causing the problem. But when we turn from our sins and we start obeying God's commandments, it says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. And so Jesus said, you are the light of the world. We are bringing light and showing people the right way. keeping them from a lot of dangers. If they'll, if they'll see and heed and follow good examples. Let me give you several of the commands Jesus, and some of the teaching Jesus gave where he said, you're the light of the world. For example, he said, you've heard, do not kill. But I say to you that whoever's angry with his brother is in danger of the judgment. Now, you've probably never shot anybody, never stabbed anybody. Yeah, but you know and I know we've gotten angry at others, sometimes called them by some bad, mean bad names. And Jesus said, whoever does that is in danger of hell fire. He said, if somebody tries to take you to law and take your stuff, give them your stuff. He said, agree with your adversary quickly. Don't go to law against uh, fellow believers. Give in. He said, also, you've heard, don't commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever's, whoever looks at his and a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Man, you can see that's a big change from how the world lives. I mean, I mean, guys are living in adultery morning, noon, and night in their minds, especially with the pornography. You see, if you come to Jesus, you make a huge change. You've turned from those sins. Get rid of whatever it's, if it's, if it, if it's necessary. It'd be better to cut you out. Uh, throwing away your phone or your computer would be a pretty small thing compared to cutting your eyeball out. Yeah, it'd be better to do that than, and still enter into life than to keep both eyes and to be cast into hell. And then Jesus said, love your enemies. Love your enemies? Well, we love our friends. Yeah, Jesus said, anybody does that. He said, what do you more than others? Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Then he said, if you're gonna do good things for others, like giving gifts, he said, do it in secret. You see, that's different. But when we obey him, we are showing the right way. We're a light to the world. Uh, we, don't, we don't go out in the middle of the street and make a big show of prayers, making a prayer. Um, somebody asked, wanted me to go to out in front of Parliament and and uh, and ha ha have a big public prayer. The no, I had something. I was preaching and I had something more important to do. But no, that's not the way Jesus said to do it. Our prayer is not to be a big public thing. Somebody said, "Yeah, but you ought to go and be a good example, be a good testimony." No, a good testimony is obeying what Jesus says. Our main prayer ought to be in secret. Jesus said, when you pray, go in your room, close the door, pray to the Father in secret. And sometimes our prayer is so desperate, we don't even eat, we fast. But we're not supposed to make a big show of it. We don't tell them, man, I'm so tired, I've been fasting seven days, you know. No, keep it secret. And God will reward you. 
And then be sure you're entering in at the narrow gate. There's a wide gate. Many people are going to destruction. Some people may even be working miracles and still be on the wide road. Jesus said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, haven't we prophesied in your name and cast out demons and done many wonderful, mighty works? He'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. People never were even saved. They had special powers. They're even working miracles in Jesus' name. Yeah, but that's not the test of how we're really saved. How do you know if you really know the Lord? I'll say it again. And hereby we do know that we know him. 1 John 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. When we follow Jesus, we make a big change. Our, our prayer, we pattern our prayer after the Lord's prayer. It's a rather simple prayer. It's not a real long prayer. In fact, it's pretty short. But it's a pattern. To show, it shows us the things we ought to pray. We start off praising him. Enter into his gates, remember, with thanksgiving and his courts of praise. We, we submit ourselves to do what he wants. We ask for his blessing on ourselves, our families, and others. Thy kingdom come. If God's kingdom comes, it means righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, 17. So, we'll pray too. We'll do it in secret. We'll ask and get his blessing. Hey, every day. You, you, you won't amount to much as a Christian if you don't have a time each day alone with God, praying and getting the help you need, enjoying his word and thinking it over. You can get blessings for yourself, for your family, and many others. Ask and it shall be given to you. And then let's do what Jesus also commanded. He said, pray that God would send laborers into his harvest. There's a whole world of people on the way to hell. And we have the good news. There's others, there are others who have the good news. Let's pray that God will send laborers, people who will really work in the harvest. I'm not talking about political activism. I'm not talking about sitting on committees. I'm not talking about a lot of things that are even good things. But they're not, they're not winning souls. They're not making disciples. They're not rescuing people from everlasting fire. Pray that God will send laborers in the harvest bringing people to repentance and faith in Jesus. Now, if we will obey those commands, watch. If we will obey these commands that Jesus has given, remember he said, go make disciples and baptize them and teach them to observe all, that I've, all the things I've commanded you. If we will obey those, we'll teach others. We'll be like a lighthouse, protecting, just like the lighthouse protects these sailors and these ships from crashing into the rocks and sinking in the sea, we can save people, we can help people be rescued from lots of dangers in life, and worse, worse still, the danger of everlasting fire. A whole lot worse than sinking out at sea would be to be cast into a lake of fire. You're the light of the world if you're following Jesus. Let's be sure that we're obeying His commands. We're teaching others to obey His commands. And we can be the light to guide many people to the right way. The path of the just is, a, is as a shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. Are you, a, are you getting to be a better and better lighthouse for Jesus? Let's read God's word and do what it says and obey him. And we can bring many more and many, many more and many, many, many more to turn from their sin to trust in Jesus and follow him. And then they can bring many more as well. When God first made the world, everything was beautiful. But it did not take those men and women long to go their own way. And God looked down and saw that the earth was filled with violence. Every imagination of the thoughts of their heart was only evil. And God was sorry that he had made man on the earth. 
And God knew that the best thing would be to punish, in fact, to destroy the sinful world. But there was one man who believed God. The Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible also says Noah walked with God. And so God told him to make a great boat, an ark, so that when he destroyed the world by a worldwide flood, Noah and his family would be saved. So Noah believed God. And if you believe God, you obey. He went to work building the ark, huge boat, about one and a half times as long as a football field. Here's the door. It looks like a little tiny door, but it's not. It's big enough for an elephant or a dinosaur to go through. Noah goes to work building the ark. He believes God. He's preparing. I suppose when Noah was building the ark, his neighbors would come and stare and point. What you making, Noah? Well, it's an ark. What's an ark? It's a big boat. Noah, you are crazy. There's no water here. Well, we know now it was not Noah who was crazy. It was those people who did not believe God and prepare and get on the boat. Finally, the ark was finished. Noah went into the ark. His wife three sons, each one had one wife. Only eight people believed God enough to go up the ramp, to go in the door and be ready for the flood. And then God closed the door. Well, if God closed the door, it's too late. I bet you can't open it. But it didn't rain the first day, it didn't rain the second day, third day, fourth day did not rain the fifth day or the sixth day. But brother, on the seventh day, I bet you never saw such a stormy, threatening sky. And brother, did it rain. The Bible says the windows of heaven were open and the fountains of the great deep were broken up. Water coming out of the sky. The windows of heaven were open. Water coming up out of the earth. The fountains of the great deep were broken up. And suddenly, the earth is beginning to be covered and overflowed with water. And those people who did not get into the ark, now if they beat on the door, beat on the boards, the sides of the ark, it's too late. Rain for 40 days and 40 nights. If they ran to their houses, that didn't help for long because the houses were not only covered, they were swept away in the terrible flood. If they ran to the hills or to the mountains, that did not help for long because all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered and the mountains were covered. It was a worldwide flood. All the people in the world were destroyed, the sinners. Remember the kinds of sin that mentions? Number one, the earth was filled with violence. Number two, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, man's heart was only evil continually. You see, God sees what we do. He sees the lies. He hears them. He sees the stealing, the violence. He sees the adultery and the rape. He sees the disobedience to parents and other authorities. Yeah, but he also sees our thoughts. Most of us never killed anybody. But the Bible says whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Jesus said, you've heard, do not kill. But I say to you, whoever's angry with his brother is in danger of the judgment. And whoever says, you fool, is in danger of hell fire. No, we never stabbed anybody, never shot anybody dead. Yeah, but 
Did you ever get angry at someone? You know and I know. We've gotten angry at others, sometimes called them by some mean, bad names. And Jesus said, whoever does that is in danger of hell fire. God is angry with the wicked every day. Man, we better be sure we have repented. Turn from our sinful way. He that covers his sins will not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Who's going to have mercy? Those who name their sins and forsake them, turn away from them. There'll be a change. We've lied. Now we tell the truth. That stuff we stole, now when we can, we give it back. We've hurt others, now we'll be kind. We've disobeyed, now we obey. Whether mom and dad are watching or not, whether husband's not watching or not, whether the police are watching or not. We've committed a lot of sins in secret. When we repent, now even in the privacy of our thoughts, we want to please God. That's a big change. And God sent this terrible flood as a judgment, a punishment for sin. The, the marks of the flood are over the whole earth. For hundreds of feet down, sometimes thousands of feet down, the whole, the, the ground, the sediment was over, is just churned up in layers, layers as the flood stopped. And you, you can see, like in the Grand Canyon and other places, uh, how all these layers of, of uh, different kinds of earth are laid one on top of the other. It happened at the flood. Now there is a way for the people to get ready. They, it was necessary that they go in the door, get on the ark to be safe from God's righteous anger and judgment on a sinful world because we've all sinned. And the soul that sinneth it shall die. The wages of sin is death. And the second death is a lake of fire, the Bible says. There's a way for them to be ready. Pretty simple. Get on the boat. God has made a way for us to be ready. Jesus is coming back again. The Bible says he's coming back in flaming fire. I don't know anything that hurts as bad as fire. I accidentally burned my wrist, maybe a half a second. It was burning and sore for days. This is not just for a few seconds. This is not just for a few days. Jesus called it everlasting fire. He called it everlasting punishment. It'll be a horrible, terrible time on the earth when Jesus comes back to punish the world. The sun will be darkened, the Word of God says even in the daytime. The moon will be turned like blood. It'll be such a dreadful time, people will wish they could die. In fact, they're gonna cry to the rocks and to the mountains to fall on them. Did you hear? That'd be terrible if those big rocks on the mountains came rolling down and crushed you. Yeah, that would be terrible, but that would not be as bad as facing Jesus, the judge, when he comes back to punish sinners. Now, there was a, a way for them to be ready, to be safe. There's a way for us to be safe. When Jesus comes back to punish the world, he's gonna punish the world because of sin. And God says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord for he'll have mercy and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Now, how can a righteous, holy God pass over sin. Does it just, does it not really matter? It does matter. God doesn't just pass over sin. The sin must be punished. And here's what God has done.
He sent his son Jesus down from heaven. Jesus came down, was born of a virgin, and from the time he was a little boy, he never sinned. When he was a man, he healed numerous people. He was kind, gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, made the lame to walk, made the sick well, cast demons out of people who'd been bothered and troubled by them. What did the people do to him? They murdered him in a bloody, violent death on a cross. But that was God's way of punishing the sins of the world. Jesus was willing. He loved us enough to take our punishment for us with us not even caring. And so Jesus shed his blood on the cross, not for his sins, but for ours. He has made a way for us to be saved. There was a terrible judgment in the time of Noah. There will be a terrible judgment in the future. God repeatedly warns about. But you see, Jesus has taken the righteous anger of God. He took our punishment. He never sinned. He took our punishment for us so we would not have to take our own punishment. Now, there's several comparisons. Jesus is sort of like the ark, or you could say the ark is sort of like Jesus. Well, there's only one way to be saved in the time of the flood. That's to get on the boat, to go through the door. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter any shall be saved. There's one way to be saved there. Jesus said, I am the way. He said, no one comes to the Father but by me. He's the only way. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the only way. And back here at the time of the ark, the boat protected those inside. They were safe. The, God told them how to build the ark. The ark stayed together. I don't know, there must have been terrible storms. But they all survived. They're all safe. And when we come to Jesus, He gives us eternal life. And we better be sure we've turned from our sinful way. Not just the stuff that we do, even the evil thoughts. That's what repentance is. It's a change of mind. You see, some people, they change their bad, certain bad habits that people can see. And they look very nice and very religious. Yeah, but God's looking at the heart. He knows whether we're still lusting after somebody else's wife. He knows if we're still angry with someone who's wronged us. He knows if we have refused to forgive. And those people who continue in those sins will take their own punishment. Be sure we've, we need to be sure we've turned from our sinful way, even our evil thoughts. He sees if we're greedy, we're not satisfied with what we have, and we're trying to get more and get what others have, get more than is, is wise and appropriate, more than the will of God. God sees our covetousness. Let's be sure we're safe. Now watch. God judged a wicked world for their violence, for their evil imaginations. But there was a way to be saved. They had come through the door. Jesus said, I am the door. He's the, the ark was the only way. Jesus is the only way. The ark protected those inside from the fierce, burning wrath, anger of a holy God. And so God has sent his son Jesus to take our punishment, the righteous anger of God that we deserve to suffer fell on Jesus. It killed him. They buried him. 